Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues, and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. It was a surreal moment Wednesday night when stenographer Diane Reedy had her outburst on the House floor. She rushed the dais and started shouting as members were finishing voting on the bill to reopen the government and avoid bumping up against the debt ceiling. No one knew why this, in, her, in the words of her husband, sweet, level-headed woman was suddenly scolding Congress, screaming that a House divided will not stand. But now Reedy's saying God made her do it. In a statement to Fox News, she said, For the past two and a half weeks, the Holy Spirit has been waking me up in the middle of the night and preparing me through my reluctance and doubt to deliver a message in the House chamber, and that is what I did last night, unquote. And though she obviously broke the rules of decorum, Reedy was doing what so many Americans wanted this week, giving Congress an earful, making sure they heard her. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Mike, there was a really strange moment as that vote was coming to an end with the House stenographer getting up to the microphones. Let's take a listen to this, first of all. Sure. He will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. Don't touch me. He will not be mocked. The greatest deception here is this is not one nation under God. It never was. Had it been, it would not have been. No. It would not have been. Constitution would not have been written by Freemasons. They go against God. You cannot serve two masters. Now, she works for the House, right? Guard Brett, both Steny Hoyer, the leading Democrat, and Ileana Ross Layton, and the Republican who was in the Speaker's chair at that time because she's a stenographer who works regularly on the floor. Uh, Ileana Ross Layton and described her as normally a very gentle soul, and so it really shocked everybody when things are done by the book on the floor of the House, and suddenly there was this outburst at a critical time with this vote tonight. Yeah, very strange. Mike, thank you. She said, thus spoke the Lord, and this is not the Lord's work, is what she said at the microphones. A bizarre moment disrupted the House vote tonight when a stenographer was dragged off the floor. She had managed to make it up to the Speaker's chair and went on a rant that lasted about half a minute. We're learning more now about all of that. Our chief congressional correspondent, Mike Emanuel, is live from the Capitol. Mike? Well, good morning, Megan. Following the outburst, the woman was interviewed by U.S. Capitol Police and then taken to a Washington area hospital for a mental health evaluation. Her name is Diane Reedy and is well known to House lawmakers as one of the stenographers who regularly works on the House of Representatives floor. We're told she walked up to the podium below the presiding officer and asked if the microphones were on. 
She then began saying things like, thus spoke the Lord, and this is not the Lord's work. The Constitution would not have been written by Freemasons. They go against God. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. Praise be to God, Lord Jesus Christ. Congresswoman Ileana Ross Leighton, who was presiding at the time, then hammered the gavel and tried to quiet her. Reedy then said something about the devil. Ross Leighton called it sudden, confusing, and heartbreaking, and noted that this woman is typically a gentle soul. This was a moment late night on a big night here on Capitol Hill that genuinely seemed to stun lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Megan? All right, Mike, thank you. Joining me now, Chad Pergram. He's our Fox News senior Capitol Hill producer. He was there seconds after this happened and spoke with some of the members who watched it unfold. So it sounds like a sad incident. It sounds like this person may have had some sort of a mental health episode, whereas she you know, had never been um, prone to that in the past from the sound of it, Chad. Right. I know her, and I've talked to her uh, many times uh, over the years. You know, there were a lot of references about God, uh, you know, during her, her rant uh, from the dais, and when they pulled her out into the hall uh, there and tried to take her down the elevator. She's very religious, and people were very concerned here. There's a lot of people here on Capitol Hill who have talked with her. She always has a smiling disposition. And, you know, we see a lot of strange things on Capitol Hill. It's not strange that we see a protest outside the Capitol. Once in a while, there's a protest inside the House chamber. But to have a protest in the middle of such a big vote as the vote was coming to a close, and no less for it to be someone who works here, I don't think I've ever seen that in all the years that I've covered Capitol Hill. And that's what was so confusing. And especially to have somebody run up to the dais. Remember, this is the very place where the president speaks when he comes to Capitol Hill to deliver the State of the Union. Right. What I mean, you have to ask about uh, so the security measures and only the ones that are made public. But, you know, is there a screening process that these people have to go through? Those people who we entrust to work so close to our lawmakers? Yeah, I, I've never heard of anything concrete like that when it comes uh, to an issue like that. But they do have U.S. Capitol Police in the Speaker's lobby and in the chamber, plainclothes persons. There are also persons from the Sergeant at Arms office uh, who come. And if you look at the video there, the first person to get to her was the House parliamentarian, Tom Wickham, who just happened to be up on the chamber. And then there were two other chamber security personnel who came from both uh, the left and the right who eventually ushered her out. Those are the people who, you know, are asked to uh, keep order in the House chamber. We've had them even and take House members out. A few years ago, Bobby Rush, a congressman from Illinois, uh, came to the House floor and put on a hoodie, and they removed him oh, yeah. uh, during his speech because that wasn't uh, in the decorum of the House. And those are the same people who ushered out the stenographer. What were the tonight. lawmakers saying in reaction? I tell you, people were absolutely stunned. Uh, Steny Hoyer, the uh, minority whip from Maryland, just had a, a look of shock on his face. Other people were scratching their heads and saying, you know, that we know her. They were very concerned about her. About her. And I think that was one of the other things. You know, the Capitol Hill is a small community. It's almost like a small town. And everybody knows each other. And you see each other every morning and you talk. The members, the lawmakers, the journalists, the aides, the stenographers. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I've uh, talked to her over the years. And uh, that's why everybody's so shocked, yeah. you know. And again, to, to punctuate this on a night like tonight in the middle of such a, a, right. a big vote, it's really just bizarre. That's the only word for it, Megan. You know, as, as much of this process has been, Chad, thank you very much. We wish her all the best uh, in the Absolutely. road ahead. I want to let okay. our viewers know that now uh, we are just getting word in that the president has signed the bill that has been forwarded to him. Uh, from the Senate passed, uh, passed earlier this evening and then the House later tonight. And so we do now have a deal. Uh, the president has signed it where the government will remain open in, and funded through January 15th and the debt ceiling will be raised until February 7th. And these lawmakers and the White House have until then to decide what next because that debt ceiling is coming again. It's coming again. And, uh, you know, the government is going to need to get funded and the stakes of that have not yet been resolved. It was a really strange moment as that vote was coming to an end with the House stenographer getting up to the microphones. Let's take a listen to this, first of all. Sure.
will not be mocked. He will Don't not touch me. be mocked. He will not be mocked. The greatest deception here is this is not one nation under God. It never was. Had it been, it would not have been. No. It would not have been. Constitution would not have been written by Freemasons. Yes, God. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. Praise be to God, Lord Jesus Christ. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.